Hello, welcome to another vertex animation video. So this time we're going to use the particle function or the sprite function. So in Houdini again, I already have a setup, so we can get these files as well. I have a very basic particle, as you can see, like it's just a rotating sphere, sort of like emitting particles in here. Talking a bit about the setup before I jump into exporting. So I have a sphere. I scatter around a few points on them. Then I'm going to make sure the, this is moving around. So we are actually moving this around. You can also do some time shifting to make it more interesting. You can play around with that. Um, interesting here is I can calculate the trail. So I actually use compute velocity. So it's actually outputting a velocity value. We can also set this to the original one, which will create these lines, which are also interesting. But we're going to use compute velocity. And in the simulation network, the velocity will then be used here to drive these sort of effects of the trail. Now, in this network itself, it doesn't really have much uh, nodes. So we have our pop source, our object, and then the solver. And then also interesting here is the color. So you get that blue uh, to red color. So you can add more colors or make it more interesting. So then after that, we want to make this maybe loopable. Since in game engines, we often want to make things loopable. So we're going to use the make loop node and we're going to set it to particle. So when I press play now, it will just basically keep rotating and spawning more of these uh, emitting particles. So now we have a perfectly loopable simulation here. And the one thing that I need to still do here is uh, in game engine, we will actually have a geometry on the points. So if I would now here as example, put my geometry on here, you can see it's very large uh, and it's not that nice to work with. So I want actually a value for scaling. So as you can see here, I have a scaling value. So I'm going to remap my H to my scale. So the longer the particle lives, the smaller it will get over time. So we can control it here. So this is just very useful. Also, like I can also make it a bit smaller. So in game engine, we also have particles a bit smaller. And again, we are using the null node as output. Uh, here on the side, I also have something which is called custom cards, which I will touch in a moment again. But I'm not going to uh, go in depth about that. So with that setup, we're going to again go to our outputs. So either create a new network or you can just switch to outputs here. So we're going to use a vertex animation tool and let's talk about some of the settings. So first of all, we need to set this to a particle sprite. So we are working with particles. We also need to choose our game engine. We can set the range. So in this case, it's 100 frames. You can add more or less depending on how much you want to export. Then our input geometry will then be my uh, sprite here. So sprite output. So that was the null node. And then further, we have settings here specifically for this sprite mode. So here we have a uh, support, support particle in in frame interpolation, so that's very useful to have on. We can also choose. We can also choose here what the shape will be of the on the points. So if you just use a square card on each point, there will be a square card. If you use a triangle on each point, there will be a triangle. You can also have a hexagon. So there is also some information about why you should change them. So for example, here uh, with the hexagon, it will increase the triangle count, but there will be less transparency overdraw. So this might be interesting based on what you want in your project. Maybe you want to have something with less overdraw or something else. So you might be uh, interested to change that. We also have the orientation, so leave it like default. Then here we have the custom shapes here, and that is actually uh, this here. So we can actually draw or make custom shapes. And these custom shapes can then be spawned on the point. So if I enable custom shapes, I can actually have this shape. So these are actually two shapes. So we have like that moon shape and like a star. So if I use this, I can, instead of having that, uh, the, the square cards you saw, we are actually overriding that square card with our own shape that we make. So you can still decide what shape you want. Uh, so you're not forced to using the square card, but for my demo, I'm just going to use that. Then furthermore, we have our all mode results. So again, here, this toggle, I'm not caching out simulations, so I don't have anything cached. So again, 
it's it's quite recommended caching out simulations so using for example the file cache node so if you make something complex cache out your simulation so i'm not doing that so i'm going to toggle that off you're also going to use the hdr format so based on maybe the game engine or the bits you want to change this but hdr format i'm going to leave it like this you can export some more settings like the color we also have a debug plane if you want to export custom attributes you can do that as well and then here is the target width of the resolution of the texture uh, but most of the time it will automatically try to find a good value so i'm gonna leave things as it is then here are inputs so this is the input for the tool so what is required for this tool to work is a position so the points here they all have a position data so of course the tool will work with that you can op optionally add things like p scale the color the alpha channel and some other things so you can read some information about what what can i input in the, in the tool then here for exporting we're going to set a folder and naming so let's give this a better name so export pad let's call this tutorial for the sprites and then here this is then referencing to the naming of the node itself so i'm going to name the node uh, sprite simulation then furthermore we can add a certain suffix so in case you want to have the frame count and fps inside of the naming which can be useful then also this is then my output result so i have a geometry fpx file i will have two textures which is the position and the colors so you can choose which one you would like to see if you only want for example geometry and points or only the geometry you can choose that then we have the advanced tab I'm not going to change too much in here i'm going to leave it as this we have then the target engine we're also not going to touch that and here we have the real-time shader so if you're not really sure what you're doing or would like some help you can press this button uh, to get some more documentation so i'm good to go so these are the settings and we're going to just press render and then jump into unreal so if everything went right you can go into the folder she set as output and you can actually see the geometry and you can also see then textures so this is the result and let's jump into unreal so here in unreal i already made a folder for my sprites and i'm going to import the data so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to in my folder select everything and just drag it in here and then we import this so for import settings you can just follow along and, and take these so make sure the vertex color is set to replace then we're going to disable most of these settings and we're going to make sure here the vertex to absolute is on then we also make sure that we have import normals and tangents from the model uh, we're not going to touch the transform convert scene do not create materials and reorder materials to fpx order and should be good to go so let's press import this is my result also the textures need a special import setting so i'm going to select both of them i'm going to right click i'm going to say scripted actions and i'm going to say use the side effects hdr textures so we'll just here assign a HDR compression and some other settings so we don't have to manually tweak that. So if I now go back to my sprite folder, I have my geometry and my texture. So let's grab my geometry. So it's just a bunch of planes. And with a shader, we are going to animate the planes. So let's go here and create a material. So material, can we call it vertex animation sprites. Now in here, we're going to then uh, type in side effects so these are material functions from side effects and we're going to grab the particle sprites so we're going to place it over here and then we need to connect these nodes together so what we can do here is we can add normal so here normal and root position uh, important here was that actually by the normal turn off the tangent space so it's actually saying that here so if i select my material and search for the tangent space we can turn it off then we can also here for example use the custom uv inputs so what we need to do for that is we need to go to our material open the advanced properties here and then say i want extra material so let's press for example two and i can connect here uh, these custom uvs i can also connect the color so in, in this case, my color texture should have some colors. Let's quickly check a look. So we can see that my color texture here, it has color information. So it has that blue and that reddish color that I had previously. 
and let's go back to my material and we need to make an instance. So it's very important that you have an instance. And when you open this, you will actually see all these settings. So the node by default will create all of these parameters for you. So we're going to enable our texturing. So this is important. So this is the animation data. So we're going to have our position and our color and save that. And now I'm going to assign my material on my geometry. So let me grab that. And normally we should see a result. So in this case, it's very large. So as you can see, it's a very large squares. So let me go here to my settings. So these are uh, settings for scale. So I'm going to enable all of these. So this is my global scale. And then we have a width and height. So let me set everything to one. So that's already looking better. And then I'm going to tweak here my multiplier until I'm happy with the scale. So for example, something like this. And as you can see, this is already working. So this is the exact same result that I had here. So there are some other settings we can play around with. Uh, so by default, it's automatically playing, so we can turn it off, but I think, but we can just let it on. We can uh, set a playback rate. So if we want it to be faster or we want it to be slower, we can play around with that. We also have the FPS. So in Houdini, this is actually not a, a calculated at 60 FPS. My Houdini FPS was actually 24. So it will actually look more like this. So you can clearly see it's like a lower FPS. So you can find your FPS here on the side and you can see here my FPS is 24. So I can set this to higher values if you want to. So there are some more settings you can play around with. So one more cool thing that we could do is we could, for example, uh, use this in the emissive. So I can multiply my color by, for example, 10 and use this in the emissive. And then I have a cool glowing particle. So this is how we can use the Sprite Vertex Animation tool sets to create an effect like this. Or we could again make something more complex with more particles. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.